I was like at a point where even how things were going down, uh, I wasn't happy. You know, I was still, I was grieving, you know, the loss of, you know, two, two people close to me. I was also at a point too where I, I just, I got kind of tired of like, you know, working for someone else. That was Vander Hill, breakdancer and owner of Whack Donuts. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. In this podcast, Vander gives us a quick bio, one that includes prolific breakdancer and baker of vegan donuts. The story of his founding Whack Donuts goes back to just a few years ago, when a string of deaths in his family came amid a deteriorating living situation. And then lockdown happened. We recorded this episode at Abanico Coffee Roasters in the Mission. Shout out to Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast for bringing Vander and his story into our world. Here's Vander. Who am I? Uh, I'm the last black man in SF. My name is Vander Hill, born and raised. Um, Most people don't get that reference, but it's probably one of my... uh, Second favorite local movies, that in uh, yeah, Medicine for Melancholy. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. About in La Mission. Wyatt Sinek. So yeah. those are like my top three. Okay, those are all great movies. And of course, Bullet and any well, of the right. Dory Harrys. <laughs> right, you right. Know. But about, yeah. so, so I Married an Axe Murder. Oh, that's another good one. That's a Because really they good shot, uh, oh, and uh, Green Day shot uh, When I Come Around in My Neighborhood. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit about who, who you are, but also, what do you do? Quickly, let's get that up front. So, um, I'm actually a dancer. Uh, that was like my first love. Uh, I've been got into breaking around uh, high school, so like early nine, uh, mid '90s. Got into breaking and um, actually took it a little bit more serious uh, in my 20s and start uh, actually competing and traveling. Oh shit! Okay. So I've been in Japan, Korea, uh, Taiwan, uh, Russia. <laughs> Netherlands, uh, Finland, and a bunch of other places I forgot. I said we're doing photos later. I might have to get you some video. <laughs> we'll see. I'm, no uh, pressure or anything. <laughs> I'm still. I got banged up last night in Muay Thai, so we'll oh, see how shit. I feel. So. Okay. So, but what else do you do besides? Uh, doing? And then yeah, and then uh, I bake. I'm a baker. Not the kind of baking y'all are thinking about, but uh, I actually like bake uh, sweet things. Uh, start off with um, peach cobbler that. Um, my grandma and my aunt basically kind of taught me how to make because in my family you had to cook but um growing up i was kind of seen as lazy because no one ever actually saw me cook so <laughs> were you when cooking I, when they when they were sleeping or i mean no it was just the fact you know they just didn't see it huh? i mean my grandma like you know spoiled me uh, you know and that's what grandparents do they, they spoil right. you so when i moved in with my aunt uh, after high school, we lost our house. Uh, that's why I say I'm the last black man in SF. We had a house just like that. Oh, shit. And senior year, we lost it, unfortunately. And yeah. so I didn't want to move to the East Bay with my grandma. And my aunt offered her spot in Daly City. Uh, you know, it wasn't, I didn't have a room, but I had a space still. And uh, so when I lived with her, she was, she, you know, I was her only nephew on top of that. So I was basically like her second son. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, she was my favorite aunt, and so there was that that weird, like, she was on me, but she still, like, let me get away with murder. Tough love? Yeah. Yeah. And so she was like, in this house, we cook. And so every Thanksgiving, you know, I would try and help, and I would go into the kitchen. I'm like, hey, you know, hey, auntie, like, what do you need help with? And she was like, if you have to ask me, then I don't want you in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Like, just so you know, like, it was mostly a female-dominated family I come from. Oh, nice. So, um... But out of nowhere, uh, you know, she she kind of like taught me how to like make peach cobbler, and then I just kind of took it as my own. And so my cousin, who's like three months apart uh, from me, she was like, "When did you learn how to like bake, like cook?" I was like, "I've always known how to. It's just like y'all never gave me the you know the chance to to do it. So I just played possum basically. Yeah. And then you know, obviously, like when I moved out uh, and I was living on my own, that was kind of my my go-to. So. Uh, baking, peach cobbler was like my thing. Um, was it always more baking than cooking, or 
uh, it was more baking than cooking, but that's, like that's a science too, yeah, right? And, oh, every time I tell people it's a science. Cooking's an art, baking's a science. Um, and then like you know the the few relationships that I had to like if if I made like my my lady like you know peace collar if I made you peace collar that you know it, it was kind of like I was like me kind of telling you I'm, it's serious. You it's know? better than I love you. Yeah. So um, it is I love you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So but no, I, uh, you know, I always was able to cook you know once i started like you know reading boxes and i would just kind of finesse things on my own i was gonna say uh it's a science with art we, we, you can add art on later right because um watching how my uh my grandma my mom my aunts cooked i never really saw them measuring stuff it was right. just they did it like just off off the top of the dome so I mean, that's I, the heart. That's the heart. That's the heart part. Yeah, yeah. So even, but unfortunately, when you bake, it's like if you use too much salt, <laughs> you're, you're kind of screwed. But yep. um, I've gotten to a point now with like a lot of my recipes, especially like with my donuts. It's like I've made, the, I've made it like a million times, so I just know. So when people watch, the few times people have been able to like be privy and watch me, like you know throw down they're like oh wow you, you're just like a machine i'm like well i have to because i have like 50 orders i gotta <laughs> knock out <laughs> right you know so yeah but, i don't uh, th- i don't think you've even said the name of okay and here comes let's, the, the let's fun get part. into it yeah. so whack donuts is the name of my uh small business uh it comes from uh my nickname that i got growing up here in the mission uh wacko okay and so um the way i got that name was uh, when I was in middle school, we used to come down to Pancho Villa, Taqueria a lot. But um, at that time, you know, gangs were still, you know, prevalent in the mission. And um, and when was that? Uh, gangs? No, when? Oh, oh, God, that was like 92, 93. Okay. Um, and so I was the lone black guy with all, like, my, you know, Hispanic homies. And I used to get kind of weird out when they would just speak Spanish around me mm. and I'm like yo are you guys making fun of me like what's <laughs> up and they're like nah 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 so they lightweight starts you know teaching me Spanish mm-hmm. but um, a lot of times when we would try to even go to the corner store or like the taqueria you know the Sorenios were trying to like mess with yeah. us and I went, we went I went to a private school uh, Mission Dolores so you know school uniform Catholic school mm-hmm. so people thought we were pushovers mm. and so this one day I, I like I, I was a quiet one I was a peace peace guy Mm -hmm. and no one never saw me fight it was the thing no one really saw me get mad okay and this one day like these three serenios tried to like jump my friend ricardo and i just wasn't happening and i just exploded and i beat up three of them by myself oh shit okay so my original nickname when i was with my homies they used to call me payaso which means clown okay and so after that fight, um, my boy Ricardo was like, dude, you're crazy, man. You're like a, a psycho. You're like you're like a wacko. <laughs> and they started calling me wacko. wacko. And this is not, like, lo- not loco, but wacko. No. And this is before Animaniacs. So a lot of people ask me, like, oh, like Animaniacs? I'm like, I got this nickname way before. And, I mean, coincidentally, yeah, that was one of my favorite cartoons growing yeah. up. Yeah, maybe they got it from you. Yeah, so. They heard about you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and sorry, how old were you around that, around 12, 92 and 93? God, I think I was in fourth or fifth grade. You're like 11 or So yeah, I was probably like 12. 11 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been so long. I just, I just turned 40, so. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so when I started this, uh, I want to say, well, there's actually a period of um, just kind of getting to the, 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 the kind of like harder stuff. So. From 2017 to 2020, I actually lost a lot of, like, family and friends, like, okay. consecutively. So my grandma was terminally ill with cancer, lung cancer in 2017, and I literally didn't know until, like, the last time I saw her, our last conversation, and she gave me the whole, like, I've lived a good life, and I was just like, Nana, what's going on? Like, right. my sister's, like, walked me to, like, the house, and she's like, yeah, so all we can do is make her comfortable now, and I was just like... Mm. Flashing back, because it was like the same kind of scenario with my grandfather when he had cancer when I was in, like, eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And no one really told the kids anything. And so that was a really hard one for me. She passed away a month after uh, I saw her for the last time. And then 2018, my mom. Uh, so we had a, a pretty complicated relationship. I always tell people 
if you've seen the movie Moonlight, mm. like the ending mm-hmm. when he sees his mom, it's it's like that's kind of like where we were at. Okay. Um, I love my mom. I always stood up for my mom, but there are points in our life where it was just you know we we kept getting into it, you know. Sometimes it was over finances um, or just emotional support that I didn't have there, you know. Yeah. But um, she did she ha- raise you? Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, my grandparents initially raised me. Um, my mom had me at a young age, you yeah. know. Um, and so there was a point where they were kind of like, "Yo, like my, my grandparents literally stole me from my, my mom." Okay. Because she was still kind of you know getting her stuff together. But she had family, so she yeah. didn't have to adopt you. Yeah. Out, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you could stay in the. That's cool. Okay. So, um, and you know, once she got her stuff together, you know, she was living with us at one point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, but so the lying was something I really didn't understand between me and my mom you know so she lied a lot to mm. me and, and that it got to a point where I was just like I had a hard time believing my mom right and so it was to the point where it was even like people told me oh you know your mom's got cancer and I was just like I don't whatever think she's lying you know or don't believe it yeah I just didn't believe it at that point where I was at in my life mm-hmm. and so 2018 um a lot of my family was like hey you need to call your mom you need you know you gotta do this and I'm like yeah. look I'm not I'm not a kid anymore I'm, right. I'm a grown-up and so finally, my aunt uh, that I love, uh, my mom Judy, uh, the one I used to live with, she was like, well, I don't know why I was treating you like a little boy, but your mom's cancer came back and it's terminal this time. Mm. So she apparently, she got in cancer a couple times and she was always able to like fight it off. But at this time it was like, yo, it's in her bones. Oh, fuck. And so I kind of was upset because people were kind of telling me what to do. And mm. so I finally just, I finally called her out of the blue and I was just like, yo, like what's going on? Like what's happening? And she was like, well, I didn't want to tell you. And, and we kind of got into an argument mm. and I was like, I can't do this. I can't keep doing this with you, you right. know? And so eventually, um, yeah, I, it, it got worse and worse and worse. And, uh, I was at a new job at this point and, um, I finally saw her. You know, and she she was kind of uh, on her way out. You know, she yeah. was uh, she thought it was my birthday. You know, she thought I was still with this girl from San Diego. Um, it was hard, man. I, it was it was like talking to a little kid. Yeah. And um, I mean, there was a small moment where she was kind of like herself. Lucid, and then, yeah. And then, so the last time I saw her, um, you know, people were like, "You should still you should still go see her, talk to her, or whatever." And I tried to kind of talk to her, but I was like, it, it didn't make any sense to me. And I just stared at her, you know, she was like in pain and I just kissed her on the forehead and I, I like, I left. And like, that's um, it, yeah. And uh, literally, um, I, I, I had hosted an event out in the East Bay and um, and every year I was doing the same event, you know, my grand, first was my grandma and she was terminal. And my, my mom, she was terminal. So I'm trying to throw an event. I'm trying to st- maintain my composure at work. Um, I actually got upset with my boss because uh, what ended up happening was like, after my event, my mom had passed that week after uh, my event. And I was on a date, actually, with, with the girl. And um, it sucked because, like, I, I did really like her. and But it was just the timing, like, just wasn't yeah. there. I was just like... She's like, what can I do? And I was like, I just need to be by myself. Yeah. Um, we're cool now, but at the time, it was really, like, it was really hard. You know, I, I didn't want to be around anybody. And, um, so when I got the call, literally on our date from my sister, um, yeah, man, I I didn't even feel ang- I, I felt angry more than anything. Mm. And, I had to, and I was talking to my therapist. I was like, is that normal? And she was like, yeah. Well, you kind of already had your goodbye, right? Yeah, I mean, and so um, and I'm sorry so, though. That's that's tough. No, yeah, it, it it was, and and I'm still I'm still navigating through that. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I honor my mom by uh, her birthday's in February, um, so I have a playlist of um, mm. all my favorite songs and her favorite songs, and I just you know for the honor her birthday, I just play them. Nice. So um, yeah, and. Uh, then the following year was my aunt. That was the one that hurt 
Judy or yeah I'm on Judy so I had went to uh, I found out about my mentor from high school who actually was like my bowling coach so I, I was a junior bowling Olympics okay <laughs> Most people know about that my Dang, little hidden talent dancing Muay Thai and bowling and donuts yeah <laughs> we'll uh, get into it <laughs> so that's awesome love it I was tagged in a Facebook post at this point I'm not really on Facebook at the time, I'm more yeah. on Instagram than anything. And I was like, oh shoot, it's it's Daryl's birthday. And I was looking at the post and I just saw RIP, RIP, RIP. And I was like, all right, what, wait, what's going on? And yeah, uh, he apparently uh, had passed away. He was like at work, wasn't feeling good, went home, fell out of his bed. Oh, his sister had to take him to the hospital. They found this like, uh, cyst in his like shoulder and had to perform surgery he was getting ready to have another hip replacement and it was it was just like his body was just so thrashed and yeah. he actually had like a heart attack during the surgery oh, they had him on like life support and then yeah by the time i saw that post they, they you know he, he had passed yes. and so i the funeral was actually that weekend and i was just like yo and I haven't been to a funeral in like over 10 years. I, those yeah. aren't my favorite things to go to for family or friends. Right. And so I went, saw a lot of my old homies I used to bowl with, you know, from high school mm -hmm. and college. And, it, you know, it was cool. We had a little like kind of uh, gathering at, at Presidio Bowl because we all met mm -hmm. at Japantown Bowl, which mm -hmm. is people that like you, I wish could have been here to experience I don't know that. Japan Town Bowl. But uh, Presidio Bowl was, was just as good. Um, but that's how I met a lot of my like friends in high school, through yeah. bowling. And we had a little like thing for them at, at the Presidio Bowl. Nice. And so going into work um, that week, um, I had gotten uh, an invitation to for a dance competition in France. Okay. And uh, so I was like, okay, cool. So my boss gave me the okay. Nate, I, I was really kind of like tight with who I told people I dance because it's like I go to work I just I'm office manager I'm just doing that but mm -hmm. I didn't want people to know I was a, a dancer because <laughs> like I think back in the day someone thought I was a stripper because they're like dude like what do you do at night like we never see you and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm, you know, are you like a stripper or something and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm a stripper yep. I'm like, I live two that's lives. why I need a day job yeah that's why I have a day job <laughs> so uh, I'm meeting with my boss, just kind of giving her the 411, like, okay, so I made sure uh, accounting has, like, this done, I got this done, so all you guys have to worry about are these, like, rentals, and my phone is, like, vibrating and going crazy, and she's like, you want to take that? And I was like, yeah, give me a second. I stepped out, and it's my, my cousin crying her head out, and I can barely make out what she's saying, and then my other cousin, her brother... He's trying to talk to me, but I can't make out what he's saying. And then my sister's texting me, you know, Judy's on life support. But, and I'm like, wait, what's was going Judy on? Was Judy your mom's sister? Yeah, she was my mom's sister. Okay. And so these are like three women in the same family. Just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And, and your mentor. Yeah. And, and the thing was, too, when my mom was sick, my aunt kind of left me a message I really hurt. Like, she was like, you need to let go of all this, like, BS between you and your mom. You should be taking care of your mom. And, and um, I didn't go to Thanksgiving with the family that year. My mm -hmm. sister and cousin were like, hey, you coming? I'm like, no, I, I don't feel comfortable. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. I don't know what to feel right now. And I'm hearing this voice message. And so, yeah, that was the last time I heard my from my aunt was that voicemail. Oh, fuck. And so... I'm like, okay, like, where, where are you guys at? We're hospital. And I'm like, my boss is like, what's going on? I was like, my aunt's dying right now. And, and she's like, oh, my God. And I was like, and she was like, well, dude, if you have to go, go. And I was like, okay. And so I didn't have to be at the airport for a while. Was that the same day it was that you were supposed day. to leave? It was the same oh, day I was supposed to leave. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm on my way. And... I couldn't even, barely got out the door, and then my sister ta texted me, like, yo, they just took off life support. So I was, like, on, on my way out the door, about to jump on a shuttle, and they pulled the plug. Mm. And so I flew to, I flew to L.A. To, uh, with another homie. We were both going to the same event, mm -hmm. and he, he had some drama going on with this girl he was talking to, and I'm just like, I don't care, dude. And he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, my aunt just died. Mm -hmm. And he got me a drink. And I said, you know, at SFO or at LA, in LA, in, in at, LA the airport, at the at airport. The airport. Yeah. And he was just like, yo, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. And I was just like, 
I'm gonna have this drink, bro. And I'm be honest with you, I, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to focus on the competition. And because that was my thing, dancing was like how I dealt with a lot of stuff. But outlet, right? Once I started losing family members, it, it was different. Yeah. So, yeah, anything I was entering, I was either losing in the first round or losing in semis, losing in the finals. It's just. I couldn't focus. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I told him, I was like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And so it was hard to kind of put on like a happy face. So mm-hmm. I'm meeting like my international dance homies and they're like, hey, what's up, wacko? And I'm just like, hey, how's it going? And and I was like, if I get through the first two battles, I think I'll be all right. And I looked at the competition and I was like, okay, it's probably going to be me and you in the finals. And it was like the first time they had two people from USA. Mm. And uh, a lot of the French dancers I've I, I battled in the past I don't like. <laughs> they talk a lot of crap and they think they're the best, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, so he ended up winning. I lost in the semis uh, by one vote. And after that happened, I was just like, okay, I literally just want to get on a train and, and go home. Hmm. I didn't even want to be there. And they convinced me to go to the after party and and one of my homies there was like, dude, you're kind of being a Debbie Downer right now. And I was just like, bro, my aunt died. Yeah. And he was like kind of halfway like drunk. He was like, oh, shit. And I was just like, and I went back to, and I couldn't go back to my room because he was talking to this girl. And I'm just like, so I was walking around like just Paris by myself. Mm-hmm. And just, and then finally went back. And yeah, it was, so it was, I didn't want to dance. Um, when that for was a while. Like, this is like right before the pandemic? Yeah, this is like 2019. 2019? Shit. So, like, yeah, 2019 was like the last uh, competition I entered. Okay. And so, work at this point, too, was like stressing me out because when my mom had passed, they were pretty supportive. And the only thing, like, going back to what I said earlier about when I got mad at my boss is like there was a letter going around. And, uh, I told her what happened, and I was just like, I don't want to make a big deal, big deal about it. Um, I can still get my work done. Mm-hmm. But I remember one of my uh, friends from accounting was like, hey, did you sign the uh, postcard? Someone's mm-hmm. mom passed away. And I remember I looked at her, and I was like, yeah, that was my mom. <laughs> and she was like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And I just remember I went up to my, I went straight to my boss's office, like, hey, like, I told you that in confidence. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't. Cause you know how it is at a job. It's like you you have your coworkers and then you have like you know your like secret your special circle. Sure, sure, sure. And I had a special circle like my three work uncles um, and a couple other folks. And so when my boss did that, I, I was like, look, I get what you're doing, what you're trying to do, but I, I didn't want the whole office to know. Right. Because it's kind of like you know I had to deal with birthdays and stuff like that. And like, come on guys, come down. Like we're gonna cut the cake. Sign and you're the like, card. I don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I felt when I saw a lot of names on there, they just wrote their name. They're like sorry for your loss mm-hmm. and I was just like mm-hmm. so um, by that point though they said my work performance was like suffering and I was like what I haven't no one's been complaining you know I've been doing what you so everything at that point they were nitpicking nitpicking and if I just came to a head I was like you know what I'm gonna just take a a, a leave of absence just so I can get my head right right but before it, I was approved they were like oh we need, we need to talk to you and for, I, had, I got a verbal, then I got written up, and then they wanted to meet with me on a Friday, like at like five. And I was that, like, that can't be good. But she was out of town, so it was Monday. I called my union rep guy, who was actually an old boss from the Exploratorium. Oh. And he was like, hey, you know, uh, yeah, I'll be there. I got you. <laughs> and so, yeah, we just kind of agreed to go our separate ways. Okay. And so, um, this is end of tail end of 2019, going into 2020. Uh, my roommate at the time had a, had a, a had asked me, he was like, hey, I have a friend who needs a place to crash. And I was just like, look, I'm not in the great headspace right now. Right. How long are we talking? And she said, oh, you know, two weeks. And I was like, as long as he's not in my way, he doesn't mess up your flow, I'm, I'm cool with it. And then, at, and then at some point she told me she got breast cancer, but she oh, didn't geez. want to tell me because of like, my, my family law so mm-hmm. I was just like I mean well thank you but you know let's talk about your friend because at the time that was two weeks I came back from San Diego and he was still there oh, yeah. so two weeks turned into almost nine months oh shit of course and so uh, yeah man I went through oh is that but is that because of the pandemic or was, yeah uh, he's kind of stuck well he, he was stuck 
basically like why this is right when they started doing the shelter in place. So yeah. it was like you kind of felt like you were an eight again. You're like, okay, bedtime, eight o'clock, you know. <laughs> right. And so I didn't have a problem with him, but she was kind of like letting stuff slide with him, like you know, kind of going in and out of the house. And I was like, yo, does this kid have a job? Like, what's going on? I'm I'm like walking through my own apartment, and he's like smacking his lips like oh you know you're kind of being loud i'm just like excuse me Dang. and you know she started drinking more when he was there like wine and stuff so they'd be up till like two three in the morning i just remember this one night i was like i couldn't sleep yeah and i was like hey guys you know it's like almost four in the morning like you know are you gonna be up any you know longer and they're like she's like, oh yeah yeah well, we're going to bed soon and then as i'm walking away he's like oh but weren't you just up watching my like, tv and playing video games Turn right back around. I was like, "Excuse me." Yeah. I said, "I live here. I pay rent here. You know, um, you're just a guest. You're not even really supposed to be here. We're like, weren't you supposed to be here for two weeks?" And so, I I was raising my voice, but she gets in my face and she's like, "You don't talk to him like that. He was my friend." I was like, "It's it's, it's three in the morning. <laughs> I can't do this." And so I go back to my room and she chased me down the hallway and she was like trying to force her way into my my room and I was like, "Yo, like you need to back up." You know, and I kept warning her. I was like, I don't want to touch you, but I will push you away because I, I feel threatened right now. And then invaded. Yeah. So yeah. I shoved her away and she was like, this is this how you want it to end? And I'm just like, like, send me an email. I said, I, I, it's three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so they left. This was actually the week of my birthday. <laughs> so I had to place it myself. And um, they came back. And I remember, I want to say a week after or maybe two weeks after I came home and I saw uh, I thought it was a notice on the on the on the front uh, of our building because the landlord was trying to sell our building mm-hmm. at this point too yep um, but then I looked closer and it was the sheriff's office and I was like oh man that can't okay, be good either she's trying to get a restraining order on me or she's trying to sue me and so I just kind of ignored it at first and I was like well I'll go down there when I have time and then finally I wake up to her knocking on my door and she let the sheriff into our apartment. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of like, you know, Peter Parker in the first Spider-Man, just like <laughs> quiet in my room. Right. I climbed out my room and I was like, oh my gosh, she called. I was like, okay. So I went, I finally went downtown and they're like, yeah, your roommate's trying to get a restraining order on you. And I was like, okay. And then I want to say that same week. She Sorry, just, how does that work if it's a roommate? Okay. It's like y'all well, just have rules about. Yeah, so this is my first the? rodeo, my uh, the Craigslist life of like being, you know, living in San Francisco. Uh, a previous roommate tried the same thing on me, just to kind of spite me. So when you get, a, say, like me and you are roommates, and you know, I've crossed the line with you, so you can get, you can file for a restraining order, and it's technically a real restraining order until we go to our hearing. Mm. So on there, you get they. Usually they're like, oh, it's like, you know, 10 feet. So we can't come within 10 feet of each other. Right. Um, I mean, there are exceptions. Like, obviously, if I have to go to the bathroom, you know, whatever. Right. But some people will, like, abuse that. And sure. they're like, I feel threatened right now. This person is blah, blah, blah. I have a restraining order. Mm-hmm. So it sucked because I had to cut through the living room to get to the kitchen and bathroom. And she was sometimes just kind of, like, hover. Right. And then the like other guy, you almost. yeah, I was just like, man, really? So the cool part is she also sent an email and I'm like looking at the email and she's like, I'm moving out at the end of the, at the, end of the month. And so this is May. And I'm just like, wait, you're trying to get a restraining order on me and, and then you're going to move. move out. Okay. And so something's not right. Her little friend moved out finally at some point. And then, yeah, we went, we went to, we went to the hearing and she didn't even show up. Mm. And I was just like, okay. And then that's when I met the landlord who fired the property management at that time. And it's when we get into my situation that I've been like dealing with for the last two years of right. um, my shady landlord was raising the rent. Cause I was like, Hey, I want to be on the lease. And she was like, Oh, um, why well, am I going to raise your rent from, it's 1839. I was only paying half of that. Right. But it was in her name. But it was in her name. So I was a subtenant, but I was trying to like take over the full lease. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 1839, I could afford that. Mm-hmm. Still reasonable. Still right. kind of normal. So 
the landlord's like, oh, I, you know, I was doing my research and I agreed with the property management that, you know, raising it to 3500 is still reasonable. And I was like, excuse me? With the excuse that it's a new lease or something? like. So a landlord can raise the rent to market, but however, uh, there's still a certain percent that they have to, like, fall within. And if it's yeah. more than, like, 10%, then they have to give you, like, super notice. Right. Um, Does it have to get approved also well, by the city? or? Yeah, I mean... So here's where it gets weird. So it, the city actually really didn't even know how to <laughs> right, like of interpret of my situation not. because right. I, I, I was a subtenant. Right. But here's the cold part. I she took my, the 1839 rent checks from me directly. Mm. So for like three four months, I was giving her money, a check by hand or mailing it, and she was still taking them and cashing. Mm-hmm. So That's significant. Yeah, I went to the rent board. I was trying to file a petition for unlawful rent increase. Also, was filing petitions for decrease in services because, to be honest, the building wasn't in the greatest standing. Right. Um, it's here I, in the mission, right? Yep, it's here in the mission. Uh, I, it has rent control, mm-hmm. but the foundation was crap. Um, I, there was mold in the apartment. Ooh, um, okay. That's bad. I filed a, a petition for retaliation because I had an inspector come out. I was just like, yo, like, there's all these things that I'm now seeing. Because you have to also understand, my roommate, uh, she didn't want to rifle feathers. I think she did back in the day. And the landlord, like, kind of gave her crap. Because, like, we used to have a, a service dog, this little rescue dog named Sushi, who unfortunately passed away. I mm-hmm. actually had to put him down, which I never want to do again. Yeah. He got really sick one weekend when she left for New York. And I was like, hey, he's not eating. He's, like, not using the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And took him to the vet and they're like we have to put him down yeah so uh fast forward you know it's just months of back and forth with my landlord not wanting to fix stuff trying to uh, get me to pay this like ridiculous rent um and this is before the, the rent relief programs are like anywhere on the horizon right and i lost my all my petitions uh learned basically just the rent board isn't for tenants. They're more mm-hmm. for landlords. Right. So when I lost my petition, uh, the second hearing is basically kind of like when you tune into KQED or Channel 26 and you're having like, you know, their house meetings or whatever. And uh, okay, we now recognize the floor. Does anyone have anything to say? And I'm like, yeah, like uh, I'm I'm a tenant. I said I've submitted all like my the paperwork you wanted, and you're still voting no. Mm-hmm. Like. It was literally that they were like all those like in favor, and they were like nay. Mm-hmm. One one of the people that was on the board, uh, I talked to through a, um, one of the uh, rent relief, uh, the, the housing uh, constituents here in the city. They're mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm on the rent board actually, so this is going to be kind of an uphill battle for you. Mm-hmm. He bowed out. He was like, oh, I actually know this gentleman, and I can't vote. Uh, so like conflict, conflict of interest. interest. I'm yeah. just like, yo, the only vote you had. So. Um, yeah, man. Uh, and then now we enter into the rent relief programs are kind of starting to happen. But it's like, it's like later in 2020. Yeah. So it's like the 80 20. So it's like mm. you pay 20 percent and then 80 percent gets covered. I didn't even have that. And um, while that's happening, too, I started my business, uh, Wack Donuts. And uh, it was kind of starting to get more traction. So did you start it there at the apartment or? Yeah. Did you have a kitchen somewhere? Uh, started initially in the apartment, and then I knew a couple people that were sympathetic to my situation. They knew I couldn't pay rent, and they just were like, hey, you use this kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, kitchen out on 3rd. Um, Bayview Makers? By yeah, chance? yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know them. They're, so they're Earl, uh, he actually had one of my donuts uh, at a Speakeasy, and he reached out to me. Or someone connected us, and it was like, hey, if you ever need to use our kitchen, like, mm-hmm. let me know. You can, you can bake there. You can't sell there, but you can, you know, mm-hmm. use the kitchen. So he was, he's been super clutch uh, in letting me use that spot and then a couple other kitchens that I, I use. Um, Has it always been vegan? Yeah. I and was, why was that? Were, so, like, was that something you were already into or you're just like... So um, when I started this initially, I wasn't using dairy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so... Uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to make a, you know, non, non-dairy donut. And because I used to actually uh, intern at a donut shop way back in the day in high school. Uh, when uh, I went to Gal, you had to do a mentorship as part of graduation. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I kind of 
did extra at credit basically because I was interning at UCSF in the uh, oh. kidney transplant department. Oh shit! So my science teacher hooked me up and got me into a program. She was like, "Dude, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get it." So it was a summer program. I interned there, and then the same uh, mentor that I had in that program, I said, "Hey, I have to do this like you know extra credit thing." And she was like, oh, "I got you. I actually have a program," and so that counted. So when I did the internship with her. And I also did a mentorship with her, like, for, like, two weeks. I, I was ahead of the curve. Nice. So I still wanted to do stuff. I had extra time, you know, high school life. I had, I had an after-school job, but I was like, I want to do more stuff. And a family friend from uh, back in the day was like, oh, you know, I need help around my donut shop if you're what, down. Can, can you name drop what donut shop? It was Rolling Pin. But Where was that? It was a Rolling Pin that was on, like, California and Fillmore, I believe. Oh, Okay. But it, at, it was at that point, it was it was gone. Mm. So she had a, a, another donut shop that was like, um, it was in a, it was like on um, Polk, but it was like a little small mom and pop. It's, 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 it's beyond gone now. Right, right. Um, but yeah, she was just, you know, she was originally from Cambodia and she just broke down like everything that is donuts. And so people are like, why do you know so much about donuts? And I was just like, oh, like I, I used to intern back in the day. There's so. some history there, yeah. So, but you, but you weren't. Are you vegan? No, and so everyone was like, "You're vegan, right?" And I'm like, "No, I, I still eat meat. I still eat fish. You know, I just, I don't eat pork." You know, I was like, "Oh, you Muslim?" I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm not Muslim." <laughs> so it's, like, it's just like you know, 20 questions. But yeah, um, they're trying to put you in a yeah, figure no, out who the hell you are. <laughs> so which I guess is what I'm doing too. But yeah, but when um, <laughs> once I had the Instagram page going and uh, curious minds reaching out, they're like, "Oh, like." Are you done as vegan by the uh, by any chance? And I was like, no, but I, I don't use dairy. And they're like, oh, this is a bummer because they look really good. I wish they were vegan. So I was just like, wait, just give me a second. And so to I to bake instead of fry is that so, the deal? Yeah, or? I was also baking too. Uh, a friend had asked if I had ever baked donuts because she knew I did, you know, peach cobblers and all these other things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I've never not I'll give it a try. And yeah. So she gave me a recipe to try out, and I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty. This is pretty easy. And yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm going to bake these, not fry them. So, because that dealing with all that oil is like a nightmare. Yeah, totally. And so, uh, <laughs> I went back to the lab. I hit up a couple like homies and one ex that was actually like gluten free and uh, kind of vegan, I guess. And I was like, hey, can I use this? Can I use that? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool, bye. I was like, <laughs> I, I don't, I never talked to any of my exes, so whatever. Right. And so. I remember I made a post and I was like, okay, I'm 100% vegan now. And so kind of inspired by like, uh, like the impossible burger. I was like, I basically want to make my donuts. Like anyone can eat them and they will really be able to tell a difference. You yeah. Know? And it's just always the same. Like, wait, these are vegan. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. Like vegan desserts, like get a bad rap, you know, for being just disgusting and like either too dense. Or yeah. Too, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just like, so I'm a mad scientist, so I'm always trying to make them better than the last time you had it. So, you know, I definitely had some, like, you know, uh, not, not so great moments. But I think at this point, I've, I've gotten it down to a science where it's just now I look at, like, how can I make this flavor vegan? How can I make this, like, flavor, you know, better than the last time? So, right. You can like to do something. You can be good at it. But doing a business of it is always different. Like you know, it's or it's like a it's like a not necessary step. It's going beyond. Like what what was it about this that made you be like, I'm gonna do whack? It's not. I'm just not just making donuts. I'm gonna make them for people. And sell right. Them. Um. So going back to my job back in 2019. Um, ooh, the city. I uh, I was at a point too where this was your office job. This is my the office one job. Told, okay. Yeah, and uh, I was like at a point where even how things were going down, uh, I wasn't happy. You know, I was still I was grieving. You know, the right. loss of you know two two people close to me. I was also at a point too where I, I just I got kind of tired of like you know working for someone else and not yep. fulfilling like the dreams that I have. So like. My nine to five was a way to uh, basically uh, 
pay for like my like dance events that I was doing that I was organizing. So I'm, I'm like working my butt off to save money so I could like put deposits down for spaces, uh, pay the DJs, the, the, the winners and whatnot. So I was kind of doing my nine to five, but I wasn't working on the stuff that really brought me happiness. Right. So even when I started this, it, was, it, it literally was coming from a place of grief. Mm. Um, but I just was like, man, I keep waking up and I'm still not over this. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go all in. And you know, cause I tried applying for other jobs and once the shutdown happened, like most offices weren't working remote yet and they didn't know what to do with me. So like, I'm another, I'm an office manager again, but there's nobody in office. <laughs> Managing zero, nothing. So, um, yeah. yeah, I just, with, and then at the push with a lot of friends were like, dude, I think you really have something here. You should keep going. So, you know, whatever monies uh, I make off of this, it was just like, you know, that goes back to the business. So I like, you know, I LLC last year, um, you know, I've been, you know, as, as, as I ramp up and get more legit, it's like, oh, wow, I got to do this. Like, you know, I'm here, I got to, you know, do my taxes. Oh, God. You know, right. which is, is, right. is not too much of a, a nightmare. Uh, thankfully, I got LegalZoom, so they're really super helpful. It's kind of like, you know, you pay for, like, the premiere package of, a like, you know, cable, if you guys remember cable. <laughs> um, and... I could call like I could call I can schedule an appointment with like a a, a tax professional. And okay. All I gotta do is just upload documents, and they kind of like walk me through it. Yeah. And so they're like and receipts. It's really, yeah. right. Just keep receipts. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. They, they're they're like, uh, it's probably good that you're not making hella hella money. Right. You know, which is you know I'm not balling out of control, but I'm not I'm not broke. Right. You know, so I'm in this weird kind of like middle ground, so to speak, I guess. Yeah. So it's I fair have, to say you're hustling, though. Yeah, but I'm still. It's, yeah, I'm still. But hustling. you're not scraping. No, no. no. Yeah. So it, it, it's a. Uh, because I mean, there was a period where it was just like you know, with um, waiting on like 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 the rent relief has probably been the biggest like pain, but you know, I, I still see opportunities coming through all the the, the struggle and strife. So right. doing these festivals that people are finding me through through Instagram or word of mouth. Or like like here, like I, I just literally get a, a box of donuts and do a sample, and I just go walk, you know, from cafe to cafe, and they're like, oh my god, these are, let's let's have you back. Like, that's just a, isn't that an example of sometimes you just gotta ask. Yeah, I right? mean that's just that's you know the way I came up, you know, being a '90s kid. It's like I, I respect a lot of like you know the uh, this generation with the these content creators, I guess is the word now. <laughs> Influencers. Influencers. <laughs> um, you know if if. If I can still, like, have passive income and I don't really have to work as hard, you know, I, I can't hate on that. And be your own boss. And be your own boss. And that's another thing is, like, I'm my own boss. So, granted, like, I am reaching a point where I'm going to need help. But I, I I definitely, like, still like baking and coming up with the flavors. You know, I, I went to Art Institute, so I got a bachelor's in graphic design. So oh, shit. I made my logo. Oh, nice. You know, I'm really proud of that. Um, two of my college professors came out to a pop-up and they were like... You still remember? I was nice. like, "See, I, like I, I gotta make, I gotta represent." That was Vander Hill. On the next episode of Story San Francisco, Vander finishes his story. Part two drops this Thursday wherever you listen to podcasts. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 190 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review our show so we can reach even more folks. We love email. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.fm, best frequencies forever.